This is the main RockWorks menu. It consists of two major blocks of programs. The first are the utilities. And when you click on this big tab over here on the left, you're seeing the utility programs. Now this menu across the top corresponds or shows all the different programs that are in the utilities. They're fairly simple to use. If it, Let's say in, in this case I've loaded up a sample file that has some ion data and I want to produce say a Piper diagram. So I click on Piper diagram. The first thing I'll see is the, the user manual which is embedded in every one of the RockWorks menus. Over on the left side of the screen is a list of the columns that are going to be used by this program and here's where you can specify which column contains what. By doing this it means that if you're importing your data from Excel, you don't have to put it into our structure. You can keep it in the same order and just change it over here in these columns. This next block of information is where you specify things that are the, basically the nuances of the, of the uh, in this case, the particular uh, Piper diagram that the program is going to create. The most important button is down here, the process button. That's going to take your data and produce some type of diagram. In this case, it's a Piper diagram. At, at this stage, you can go ahead and select that you want to export the diagram out to a variety of different bitmap or vector formats or print it out. Let's say I want to uh, use these XY coordinates in this geochemistry to make a contour map. I'd click on Map, select Easy Map, define, in this case, far less columns to define, but which columns contain the X, the Y coordinates, and what is it that we're going to contour. In this case, I'll plot magnesium. Go ahead and say Process. After a few seconds, I've got a contour map. That's it for utilities. If you know how to use one, you basically know how to use them all. Instead, I'd like to focus on this bar over here. Click on that, and we'll notice several things that are different. Number one is you no longer have a simple spreadsheet. Instead, you're now running that uh, relational database that I talked about before, either an MDB file or an SQL file. The menu options at the top basically correspond with these data elements here. So if I click on a given borehole, notice how the location field, which is the current one, is changing for each one of the drill holes. Um, orientation is where if you leave that blank, the program is going to assume, uh, assume a vertical hole. Um, if you put some data in there, you can basically tell the program that this is an inclined borehole or a deviated borehole. Now, for those of you in environmental work, we realize that most of the holes are going to be vertical. However, consider that for us, a vertical or a horizontal trench can be thought of as a essentially a deviated drill hole. So it's something to uh, keep in the back of your mind. Lithology is where you put in basically observed rock types, things that are not necessarily contiguous laterally across your project area, more like um, ob ob observations. If you want to add to the lithology list, you click on one of the terms and, and add a new column. If you want to change the pattern associated with a a rock type you can click here. If you want to edit the pattern you can basically uh, modify our existing patterns or add your own patterns to our pattern library. Stratigraphy is used for units that are contiguous across the project area. So this would be more like hydrostratigraphy or chronostratigraphy. Um, and then the difference between the two is important because in lithology we're using block modeling whereas in stratigraphy we're using surface-based modeling and then producing a block model. I data is for interval data, data, quantitative data that has a top and a bottom and then some numeric value. I, uh, T data is a similar type of thing, top, bottom, except in this case you can put a date in and later when we make models we can filter on those dates. P data is point data where you have one depth and then some uh, additional quantitative values typically um, things like uh, uh, geophysical downhole or borehole geophysics. The rest, um, things like we can model color, fractures, water levels, uh, bitmaps that could be included within logs, uh, vector-based or directional data, and well construction data. Now, let's go ahead and, and do something. Here, notice again, stratigraphy, we want to do something with stratigraphy, so we find the corresponding menu element up at the top in the main menu. We say we want to make a model, so we click on that. Again, the menu is, is uh, the help messages are or the user manual is built into the menu. I tell it to process the data. It's going to go through all our stratigraphic units and basically build a stratigraphic block model. And after a few seconds, I'll move this screen or these bars over so I can see a little bit. I'll enlarge the model a little bit. And now notice here, 
this is the show this little uh, area is showing us all of the elements or the themes the layers the objects that are being displayed over here in the 3d menu the check boxes allow us to turn things off so now I can start peeling back stratigraphic layers from within the model let's make a similar model for the um, say benzene values so go up to iData select model click on the process button and the program will basically generate an ISO surface or a three-dimensional contour map around some designated cutoff value. In this case, it's set to zero, so you're seeing the entire model sands the region above the uh, ground surface and below the bedrock. But notice this slider bar here. That's the one we talked about in part one where we talked about volumetrics. If I move this bar, notice that this number right up here changes. That's the volume. So we, at that level, anything greater than 19 ppm, we've got 8.8 .8 million cubic meters of, of uh, contaminated material here. I'll go ahead and add on a, uh, another layer. You can basically append as, as much information as you want to a given uh, three-dimensional diagram. In this case, I just added the stratigraphy which is going to basically obscure the, uh, the contaminant or the geochemistry as it often does in real life. And so I have two options here. One is I could turn off, start peeling back some layers so I can see the plume, or any entity within this uh, region right here can be clicked on and you can uh, basically adjust the transparency or the opacity of that, that particular element so that you can see through it. So now we're actually seeing into the model, we're seeing the benzene plume. I'll go ahead and add some more layers here, say um, some strip logs showing the, um, the actual observed benzene values. And again, I might want to uh, turn off some stuff so I can see that for a minute. Now, the plume itself is obliterating some of the high values within it, so we really can't see if the plume is justified. So I'll double click on that and uh, adjust this opacity uh, and basically say close and so now I can see through the plume I'll enlarge it a bit and uh, I can see that that value here is causing this this big anomaly in here and uh, it starts to give me some confidence in the shape of the plume corresponding with the data itself I'll throw on another layer say a um, an air photo that's been draped over the ground surface or that will be draped over the ground surface and now I might want to do the same thing with it I might want to render the air photo to be not so opaque apply and close that so now I can if I tip it back I can see it now if you're presenting data to a non-technical audience I we strongly recommend that you start out uh, very simple start out you know showing them a uh, this air photo say turn off the plume Turn off the logs. I'll get rid of the legends for now, just so we declutter it a little bit. Okay, so allow allow them to find their own homes and um, and get oriented, and then start adding data. So I might even start spinning it as I'm adding the data and say, well, here's what we drilled. And I can tip this up and show them, explain that that proportional disk there is showing me the amount of benzene at that particular point. And then I might throw on the stratigraphy and introduce that, turn off some layers. And then throw in the benzene model. So even though it, it, it isn't that much, without um, walking somebody through this, if you just start out initially showing them this diagram right here without it moving or explaining what those data elements are, um, people are going to have a hard time with it. So we found that uh, slowly introducing concepts while things are spinning you can basically take a, a non-technical audience such as a jury or a judge on a very complex tour through your geology so that's it for part three of this demonstration thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one bye now